Newsmaker Sunday with Fox 10's John Hook. And welcome to Fox 10 Newsmaker Sunday. The race for U.S. Senate in Arizona just got a lot more interesting this week. We knew Kelly Ward was in after Jeff Flake announced his retirement last year from the U.S. Senate. He's on his way out. Who will replace him? We know Kirsten Sinema's in on the Democratic side. Deidre Abood will challenge her, but Kirsten Sinema on the Democratic side, the prohibitive favorite in that race. On the Republican side, we knew about Kelly Ward. Then Sheriff Joe Arpaio jumps in the race on Tuesday through Twitter. I spoke to Sheriff Arpaio uh, just shortly after he made the announcement up at his office in Fountain Hills. Here's that discussion. You're doing this because you believe you are the best person to support the president's agenda. Would that be safe to say? Well, not only his agenda and policies, I think I'm the best guy to support the people of Arizona. I've been here since 1978 and owned and operated a, a small business, too, as well as being head of the federal drug enforcement in Arizona and sure, so my heart seems to be in this state. I love this state, uh, the people in this state, so I think I can give something back when you evaluate my resume that nobody seems to want to talk about, that I didn't just drop out of an airplane to be the controversial sheriff for 24 years. You were so uh, steadfast in trying to get this conviction expunged, get it, get it taken completely off the books. Was that because of a possible Senate run? You just didn't want that hanging over your head? You got the pardon, but you can't completely oh, no. clear up the criminal oh, no. thing. Oh, no. No, it has nothing to do with it. You mean a misdemeanor? Yes. Contempt it's not of really court, get the same time as uh, barking dogs? Is that what you're talking about? Yes, yes. I'm not going to get into those courts. I will eventually. It's not over yet. But was that why you were so steadfast in trying to get that cleared up? So, no, just so that it wouldn't hang over you in a, in a potential nothing to do with politics. Run. I'm still fighting that. So, no, I had nothing to do with it. Uh, uh, in fact, people will say, why are you stupid enough to run with that? I don't care. I did nothing wrong. And our president knew that when he pardoned me. Will, will Trump endorse you, do you believe? I have no idea. You do know uh, in my career I never asked for endorsement. They right. always ask for my endorsement. I always go to the people. So I don't know. Um, I'm a big supporter of him, as you know, since July of 2015. I don't like what's happening to him, but I can understand because the same thing is happening to me. I'm running because I know I have a background to do something uh, in Washington, not just sheriff. Aside from supporting Trump, being a Trump supporter and supportive of his agenda, what is it you would want to accomplish in the U.S. Senate? Well, one thing I would like to accomplish is go there with an open mind, not worry about being reelected, not worried about raising money, and just do what I feel is right, like I've done for 24 years as sheriff, which has caused some controversy. But uh, I don't want to be buried and uh, always think you should have done this. You should have given it a shot. So I'm going to give it a shot, and I'm going to win. I never lost a Republican primary, and I expect to beat the uh, the Democrat and the Democratic Party with the millions and millions they funneled in to defeat me as sheriff. Some people think this helps Kirsten Sinema if you were to survive a Republican primary because you'd be such a rallying cry for dumping money into her candidacy, not only for her, but to beat you. Oh, oh they're just concerned about me, not any other Republican who will face her? Well, if you were to win the Republican primary, that you would become such a lightning rod and a rallying cry for the Democrats to dump huge amounts of money into that race to help her, not only for her, but to beat you. Well, I don't know. I think I uh, don't have a problem raising money. I think I raised 13 million just as a sheriff. So they can talk about their money and whatever they want to talk about. But I'm not concerned. I'm looking forward uh, to running against her. What, tell me about, you know, the age question has come up again. You're 85 now. And you brought up Carl Hayden to me earlier today. Tell me why Carl Hayden is important to you. It's just an example. 
He was a Maricopa County Sheriff, ran for Congress, won, stayed many, many years in the Senate. Then he retired, 1969. Actually, I was with the Federal Drug Enforcement. I think I met him a couple of times. He was how old at that point? He was 92. So if I do my six years, I'll be 92. Given your history of being tough on immigration, illegal immigration, how would you possibly court those vo voters and, and appeal to them? Well, I'm a nice guy. If I ever get a chance to talk to him, I can sway him e very easily. Having uh, served as a head of the federal drug enforcement in Mexico, South America, Texas, Arizona. So I have 35 years uh, covering that border as a top official on both sides. I get along great. I get along great with the Mexican, the Latin America, Turkey when I was there. I get along great with foreigners. My mother and father came here from Italy. So if I can get to them, but there's such hatred out there against me, I'm like the trophy, the poster guy. They could love me, but still hate me publicly. But that's another issue that I will face. Uh, and I'm not uh, giving up on that. Remember, this is a statewide race. It's not a Maricopa County only race. I've been very strong in this state throughout the years. And I hope that continues and that the people of this state will vote for me and send me to Washington, which I've been there three times. For the people who are going, you're going to hear this over and over, that it's about your ego, that you can't walk away from the limelight. You just have to have this. It's like your oxygen. You have to be in the public realm. You can't stand it any other way. Well, uh, you talk about ego. Uh, what am I concerned about? I'm in the paper and media every day I've been there. You think it's nice to uh, have your wife or your family? Or your supporters will wake up and see the hit pieces they do on me constantly, the media? They never say nothing nice. They've been after me for years and years. No doubt about that. There's a big newspaper that's been trying to destroy me for 12 years. But that's okay. I still survive. I deal with the media. Thousands and thousands and thousands of interviews. I don't have to do that. I don't run a CIA operation. The reason I deal with the media, I want the people to know what I'm doing. You can't always get it through the media sometimes, but at least if you let them know, I don't run a secret operation. But you're saying you don't need this for that reason. Well, you know, I'm human like everybody else, John. I don't know if you believe that. So I have feelings too, you know. Okay? Of course you think you I do. have no feelings? No, of course I do. Now, when I wake up and see a media headline that they know is garbage, I'm not talking about just a local. I'm talking about national. They've been hitting me the past year over and over and over. So I don't need them, but I talk to them. I talk to them. So what, what ego? I mean, what are you going to do? You guys forgot me the day I left office anyway. You thought. You thought. But that didn't bother me. Didn't bother me at all. So you think uh, you think if uh, when I leave the Senate that people are going to remember the day you leave? Let's see how long they remember Flake or all these other uh, people. How long they remember governors? They all leave. They're gone. But I don't do it to be known. Come on, everybody knows me in this country anyway. I sure don't have to run for office to be known. Former Maricopa County Sheriff Joe Arpaio is in. This is not a lark. He's serious. Then we learn on uh, Friday that Martha McSally, the congresswoman from Arizona District 2 in southern Arizona, the Tucson area, is also into this race. We're going to hear from her later, but next. Joining me live in studio, Dr. Kelly Ward. Back on Newsmaker Sunday in a moment. Welcome back to Newsmakers Sunday. Dr. Kelly Ward joins us. Uh, she's one of the three big players now in the Republican uh, primary. Were you surprised, number one, that Arpaio got in, that McSally got in? Uh, you know, I, I was surprised that, that the sheriff got in. I had heard for months that, that uh, Martha might 
throw her hat into the ring. Do you know her? I, I'm, I've met her several times. I don't think that we're you know anywhere close to being best friends. I have a much better relationship with my own congressman, Paul Gosar, with Andy Biggs, who I served with in the mm -hmm. in the state legislature, and um, you know they're they're probably the closest allies that I have in Congress. I, I think they've done a great job. They're people that I would model what I will do whenever I get to the, the Senate. They're people that I can't wait to work with hand in hand on conservative issues that are facing the country and that the people of Arizona are crying out for solutions about. With, uh, with Arpaio, you responded really in a nice, genteel way to him entering the race. I mean, you guys are courting the same voters. Oh, yeah, we share a lot of the same base of voters, conservative people who are, are basically fed up with what's been going on inside the beltway that, that the people, you know, with the people who have forgotten about the people they represent. Mm -hmm. I do think Joe's a patriot. I mean, I think a lot of people do see him kind of as a, a folk legend. Mm -hmm. And, uh, He's been, been strong on immigration. He doesn't want illegal immigration, and neither do I. But I think the thing that differentiates me, me from, from the sheriff is that I've been focusing on a wide array of issues that affect the people of Arizona and the people of our country, everything from border security to stopping illegal immigration to lowering taxes and fixing the tax code, making sure that we don't wait 31 more years before we reevaluate our tax situation. Of course, Obamacare fighting against socialized medicine and big government getting between doctors and patients so that as people, a physician you yes, know that as a issue. physician I definitely had to do that and so I think that's what's made us such a strong campaign here in the state and why we're going to remain the front runner did was there ever a moment when you heard our piles in where you thought you know maybe it's just not the right time I'm getting out no never no. because I've already got my signatures you know we're going to continue yeah. to collect signatures but I will be on the ballot in August were no you, doubt about were you it bolstered by the early poll that came out that showed it's really a three-way race. I mean, you could have sat back and said, well, now that our pile's in, what's this poll going to show? That he's right. going to kill everybody and it's going to be him and McSally? Right. It I turns out it's, it's really a three-way split. Oh, yeah. Much. I mean, we're basically neck and neck all three, but I think what's really telling is that almost 60 percent of the Republican electorate in Arizona is fed up with the establishment. There's a ceiling for Martha McSally, and it's somewhere near where the ceiling was for Jeff Flake. Jeff Flake and Martha McSally are carbon copies of one another. They both like DACA. They both want amnesty. They both have been for, for open borders. You know, Martha has changed her tune since she's Do you she's not decided. like DACA? I don't like DACA. You don't want I, uh, It's to... not that I don't like DACA. It's that we have got to secure the border first before we allow the DACA conversation to even be had. I cannot uh, support a compromise that brings DACA in before we secure the border. You, you worry that Republicans are going to get rolled. Yes, yes. I, you know, Ed Rollins is my campaign chair. He wrote an op-ed uh, last week. He was there week. for the Reagan yes, years when, when, you know, Republicans think yes, they got rolled in, yes. the, in the 80s on, on the amnesty. Right. And he amnesty says, happened, border security exactly didn't. Exactly right. He said, he, you know, he, he says that there is a new Reagan revolution in progress right now and that really I'm the face of that revolution. But the other thing that he told me just yesterday was that Ronald Reagan's biggest regret was granting amnesty and then trusting Congress, trusting Congress to deliver on border security, which never happened. We as Republicans have got to learn from our mistakes. We don't want more people to flood our country the wrong way. We want people to come in the right way so that they can enjoy the prosperity and the economic uh, greatness that we're seeing under President Trump. We don't want them to sneak in across the border the wrong way, and, and we don't want to incentivize that in any way. It strikes me you still have this issue. You've got to get beyond this. They throw out this chemtrail Kelly stuff. Can you clear this up once and for all? Well, I don't. I, I hope, John, that it's once and for all. You know, when I was a state senator, I held an environmental hearing because my constituents asked me to. I guess this is what happens when Republicans try to get into the environment. And so I brought in experts from the Arizona Department of Envi Environmental Quality to address questions that people in the audience had. Some people in the audience talked about chemtrails and then suddenly John McCain and the people who supported him tagged me with that moniker. They love to try to create caricatures of people who oppose them, the insider class, and it simply is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Do people still talk to you about that? Well, I just did. Yeah. Um, I... But but do people, when you're out there uh, and you're speaking to them, do they say, "Hmm, oh, she doesn't seem like a crazy nut"? 
Oh, um, I, you know, right? Of course. They, you know, uh, so many people. I, I saw something on Twitter just yesterday. Someone said, I saw Kelly Ward convert an entire audience of antagonists because of her passion and her policy. That is really the, the package that I offer. I offer passion about freedom and liberty and our Constitution and personal responsibility, as well as policy chops. Remember, I was an extremely successful, extremely effective Arizona State Senator. In one year alone, I got 19 bills signed into law. Those bills were designed to do what people are crying out for, shrink government, lower taxes, uh, lift regulations off the heads of small businesses, allow people to thrive. One, one minute left. Um... What is it you want people to know about you, your mind and heart and your rationale for running? Right. I, you know, I am willing to sacrifice to serve. I have skills, talents, abilities, blessings, and I shouldn't just hoard those to my family or to my patients as a physician. There is something more that I have to add to this political conversation. What do you want, what do you want to I accomplish? want to focus on the America First agenda that Donald Trump ran on and that we've been working on since really 2010. How do you outflank Joe Arpaio on that? Yeah. I, you know, I, because I am uh, well versed in a wide array of of issues and I have a professional organization second to none no one will outwork us we've got the grassroots behind us all over the state of Arizona not just here in Maricopa County but everywhere and I think we've captured the heart and soul of the voter of Arizona good to see you again great to see and you. and we'll Tom. do it again I'm sure many times before uh, what we've got uh, September primary yeah. August uh, August 28th. August primary August right right it's early and then a November general. So yeah. thank you, Thanks, Dr. John. Kelly Ward. We'll be back in a moment. Martha McSally is in, representative of District 2 in Southern Arizona. Back in a minute, we'll hear from her. Back on Newsmaker Sunday, the Senate race in Arizona has gotten very, very interesting. Arpaio's in. This is on the Republican side. Kelly Ward is in. And then we hear that Representative Martha McSally is in on Friday. She barnstormed the state, Tucson to Phoenix to Prescott, to talk about her candidacy. As of today, I am a candidate for the United States Senate for Arizona. And if you want to know what my campaign strategy is, it's the old Air Force mission. We're going to fly, fight, and win on Election Day with your help. Should I now be deployed to the United States Senate, I won't just count the years of my term. I will make those years count. And as your voice for change and end to the, and end to the same sorry agenda of establishment politics, America today has a once-in-a-generation opportunity to put our economy into afterburner, provide better opportunities for everyone. Last month, I did not hesitate to vote in the House for historic tax relief for everyone. And, and thank you. You're going to start to see it in your paycheck soon. But there's much more that we can do together to, re to restore investment, revive entire regions, and bring jobs back to the United States and Arizona. Arizona, you have my word. On any issue of taxes, spending, regulation, and security, I will always be a voice and a vote for the working people of this country and this state. On legal immigration, I have sought for a strategy to control our border by more agents, censors, aerial assets, both manned and unmanned, and every other effective means, including a border wall. <laughs> And when I hear excuse makers constantly complaining that the immigration laws of a sovereign nation cannot be fully enforced, a familiar question comes to mind, why not? When facing vicious cartels and the possibility of terrorists, a secure border is not just the people's right, it is the federal government's urgent responsibility. My position is simple. There should be no sanctuary for anyone breaking those laws and harming our people and no sanctuary cities for violent felons who do not belong here. In the military, we work pretty hard on building discipline, cohesion, and unity of purpose. And I know politics is a little bit of a different world, but it's not beanbag. Look, I don't play games with the usual politics. I don't campaign one way and then vote another. 
I don't pretend that avoiding the problem is the same as solving a problem. I don't introduce legislation and pat myself on the back as if I've actually solved the issue. I maintain mission focus, and I don't get caught up in posturing and score settling. I am there for one purpose and one purpose only, to get past the games, face up to America's problems, and get things done. When that's your attitude, you can actually bring serious people together to accomplish something. I have found plenty of allies in Congress to help reform the VA, open up jobs for veterans, keep the A-10 in service, and by every measure to keep the nation's decisive, unanswerable military edge. Not long ago, I was telling somebody about the A-10 warthog. I described it to him as a badass airplane with a big gun on it. In fact, it's so big that we used to say that they built the gun and then they went to the engineers and said, hey, figure out how to fly this gun. It's not only big, but it's incredibly effective. And if you're a troop on the ground in harm's way, the A-10 has saved countless lives so people can get home to their families and live to fight another day. The man I was talking to that day was our president, Donald Trump. And I'm proud to have worked with him to save the A-10 warthog. <laughs> I'm also working with the Commander-in-Chief to rebuild our military and defeat terrorists to keep our country and our community safe. As your Senator, I will gladly work with our President as he puts judges of excellence and integrity on the, fel uh, the federal courts. And I'm working with the one man who can reverse the unconstitutional executive orders of his president, pre predecessor, and have been doing that, he's been doing that since his first day in office. Whether it's moving our embassy to Jerusalem, or speaking plain truth at the United Nations, or getting serious about our border, which we discussed at the White House on Tuesday. You may have seen that. I was sitting two seats away. This is a president who is actually focused on delivering what he ran on. And when that's your goal, you better believe that I will keep working with President Trump to finally get things done for the good of our country. I go into this race as a proud Republican, but even more, as a believer in our country. Challenges and differences can bring out the worst in us, or they can bring out the best. In these days, whatever our political party, nothing but the best will do. I will be that kind of candidate so I can be that kind of senator for Arizona. If the campaign ahead looked easy, I'd feel a little bit out of my element, honestly. <laughs> this is a statewide race with national consequences. And I'm gonna run as if the balance of the Senate counted on it. And it does. I am going to make sure that every voter knows who I am, what I believe, and what I have done in my life of service. I will run with heart, giving it my all and nothing less. I will speak to everyone and I will listen to everyone and earn their vote and not take any of them for granted. In friends here and across our state, I've got wingmen and wing women as fine as they come. Stay close, because I'm going to need you. It's my responsibility at the end of the day, though. It's on me. It's my mission to see this campaign through, whatever comes, to lead our cause all the way to Election Day. And I am ready. Are you ready? Well, thank you. God bless you all. And let's go out there and fly, fight, and win. Thank you. God bless you. It's going to be a fascinating, fascinating election season in this U.S. Senate race in Arizona. And we'll have it all here on Fox 10 Newsmaker Sunday. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week.